welcome to Take Two Radio. I am not Pam, clearly, uh, tonight, but I am filling in for Pam, who had to unexpectedly um, be away at the last minute. And my name is Dawn Mack, and I'm glad to be here with everyone, and we've got a great show tonight. And I also want to introduce the co-host of this great show, Take Two Radio, David. How are you, David? Oh, I'm doing fine, Miss Dawn. <laughs> I'm doing just fine. Um, just yeah, fine. I'm nervous well, that's... tonight. Just a little uh, nervous tonight. Well, you this know is what? big. Oh, yeah, it's a big deal and a big event. I mean, we're going to talk about that, and we've got some great people that are calling in, I think, too, are actually um, on the line now. We're going to get to yes, them in do. just a moment. But it's a it's a big night for Take Two Radio, but this is a big event, and I know uh, Pam uh, would love to be here, um, and hopefully she'll get to call in a little bit later. Um, but nonetheless, uh, this is an event that she is always honored to help promote uh, year in and year out. Um, and I know that um, autism awareness is very near and dear to her heart, as it is many people, uh, myself included. And uh, But there is an event um, called Daytime Stars and Strikes, where some of daytime's finest are a part of this, and it has become quite an event. Um, I know that a lot of fans of, of these um, stars and of, you know, the event itself – uh, tend to, you know, it's it's really grown as as the years have gone on, and so we are just honored to be a part of it. And for anyone, if you're a first time listener tonight, welcome aboard. We're glad to have you here. And uh, if you have never been a part of the show, get ready because this is um, an exciting. It's going to be an exciting time. And I want to give you a little background on tonight's show. Um, Daytime Stars and Strikes is a charity event um, that was established by a dedicated group of volunteers uh, and that's been headed up by Daytime Emmy winner actor Jerry Verdorn and Elizabeth Kiefer Convertino, who played Ross and Blake on The Guiding Light. And I know many Guiding Light fans out there know and love those guys. And um, they started this to raise awareness and funds for autism. And in 2004, uh, they started with the American Cancer Society, and after 10 years, decided to focus on the Autism Society of America. So this this um, organization and event has been around for quite some time, and as I said, it's just been growing by leaps and bounds. And um, but they've got a series of events that are coming up, and we've got several of the participants of these events who are helping organize and participate in them with us tonight, and. Um, David, you have been a part of this for a little while. Um, yeah. I know that uh, Pam has done this um, show to help promote these events. And talk a little bit about your experience uh, with some of the past shows that you guys have done to help promote this. Oh, wow. Well, we're going back a couple of years now, and when we first got Jerry and Liz on, it was to promote for cancer because Jerry was, Jerry was one of um, the, Jerry is one of our best cancer survivors out there, and we wanted mm-hmm. to promote the cancer and take to radio at the time um, we donated an alley we we became donors and we we um, what do they call it rent, rented an alley so t- so there was the take to radio alley down at when they did the bowling. So um, we donated for that, and we were happy to do it. I mean, anything that we could. Um, yeah, and, and, and I think... They were just so they were just so wonderful to us um, on here, and so um, I, was, I was overwhelmed, and I'm professionally overwhelmed. How about that? And I was just so <laughs> great, so yeah, grateful. Yeah, I, I think... I think that's definitely a great way to put it, and um, I know that, as I said, the event has grown, and to be to just be a part of it um, in in that way um, has just I know has meant a lot to you and Pam, and you know I, I feel like I'm just kind of a bystander, but I've watched how this thing has grown through the years, and the work that you guys have done, and uh, you're to be commended for that. But we have got. 
several of the stars on the line now, and uh, we don't want to hold them too long, but definitely want to bring them on, have them talk a little bit about the event, and and we're going to see who's on the line. So first up, let's see who our first caller is. Hello, Take Two Radio. Hi. Hello. And it's <laughs> I wasn't sure the who, one and only Crystal talking. Chappelle. Is this it, Crystal? It is. I you were talking to somebody else. How are you? Oh, we're doing Hi, fine. It's so nice you? of you to call in. Oh, uh, my pleasure. So, well, it's uh, really- my, my question is, I know that you guys have entered the, the Venice event. Can you tell us anything about it? Well, sure. You know, um, Wendy reached out a year ago and, and asked if we could do uh, an event with some Venice peeps. And, and um, of course, I mean, I've heard about uh, daytime stars and strikes for years and, and such a noble um, event, and uh, especially uh, with any any calls, but, you know, uh, to support and, uh, you know, raise money for autism. Um, so, yeah, I called some of my Venice friends, and we're going to have a, a an event from 3 to 6, I believe, that Saturday. Um, and uh, it's really just going to be like a mix and mingle and um, a little, little wine, a little laughing, a little silliness. But um, it'll be all things Venice at that point, and we'll just we'll have a good time and raise some money. Is there anything up for auction for the Venice event? Is there anything that that I think we're going to auction off some stuff, or we're at least we're giving away some bags, some some merchandise and stuff from them that have Venice on them. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think we're just going to, we've sold some tickets and we've got some people coming, and we're just going to have a great time. That's a, John. You have any questions? Well, um, Crystal, first of all, thank you for being a part of this this evening and uh, taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. And and also, um, this Venice event that's part of all of this, it's, it's going to be pretty exciting, um, it sounds like. And I know that along with that, you've got, you know, Robert Newman and also Hillary B. Smith. And um, I know fans are just, you know, so excited to know – Anytime you can get some of the guiding light, some of the CBS alums back together, it's an exciting time. Um, and, uh, you know, aside from wanting to be a part of this for the obvious reasons, I mean, what is it like for you when you get to kind of get back together with some of your former co- um, you know, co-stars that you have performed with? Oh, the, you know, these are my, my family and my friends. And, you know, it's always – I look for – reasons to spend time with them I you know I cast them in my show or whatever else I'm doing or producing I want them to be a part of it and you know um, I'm looking forward to it I'm actually um, um, Hillary and I are having a, a girls weekend around that and you know she's picking me up on the Friday before and um, <laughs> and we promise to be mostly good and be there and and make sure everyone has a great time and Robert you know, he's just a love, and um, you know, we have. It's 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 hard to explain when you work for somebody, and especially with the business that we're in, because it's not like you go into an office and you're sitting across from somebody in a cubicle. You you're usually rolling around in bed with them, and then you go, "Hey, have a nice evening. See you tomorrow." <laughs> and um, you know, so it's just, you know, it's an oddly it's an oddly close relationship uh, for coworkers. But after so many years, you know, it's just like. They're my brothers, they're my sisters, they're my family, and um, I'm excited. I'm so excited. I was excited to to book the ticket, and I was excited for the event, and I just think it's going to be a really great time. Oh, most definitely. And and I do have to ask you, I know that, you know, you've been in daytime for a number of years, as has everybody on this ticket for all these events. And and by comparison, what has – you know, Ven- doing Venice, how has it been different versus, you know, say being on Guiding Light or being on some of the other sites that you have been on throughout your career? Well, you know, it's it's um, it's the same kind of work, but you know, it's it's uh, I'm not producing uh, the other the soaps. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. it's different. I get to just go in and really have you know, fun and really enjoy it, and. Um, uh, but no, it's you know it's, there's such comfort in in 
working with people that I've known for so long and it's fun to work with new people as well. Um, you know, I, I worked with Katie McLean this last season um, as, as director and, and she took, took over a role uh, uh, and did a beautiful job. So it, I've never worked with Katie. So it was really wonderful to have that experience. And um, yeah, I mean, it's just uh, the, the whole daytime community is very near and dear to my heart. So, um, you know, whether it's, it's a, it's a, a broadcast soap set or an indie soap set like mine. It's it's just pure fun. Well, I, I tell you, congratulations on all your success. And oh God. I really believe that one of the reasons why Daytime Stars and Strikes has been so successful is because the fans of you guys has just, I mean, they are forever fans and they are going to support no matter what. And this is an opportunity for fans to see you guys up close and personal and doing something apart from, you know, what you would normally do, which is a real treat for fans in general. Yeah. And listen, I'm, I'm it's my pleasure. I, I can't wait. And the fans are the best. They, you're right. They're just, they're in it for the, the long haul and, and what a, what a blessing for, for people like me and the rest of my, my crazy friends, you know, it's such a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you say that that all of your your co-stars and your colleagues are are family. Where you guys are family to all of us as well. It's oh yeah, a, definitely. A, you know, getting to know you through the years of watching you play various characters and and you know, it just there's a I think it's just a love that grows among between fans and and all of you and it it's um it's never ending. So it's it's just a really beautiful oh. thing. It is awesome. really, it really is. Awesome. So, Crystal, any um. Uh, any of your cast from Beacon Hill joining you? You know, I I don't think so. Most of them are um, on the West Coast. I'm trying to think. That was a long time ago. Um, I don't think. I think it's just going to be the three of us, unless other people fly in. I know that Kiefer is going to be, you know, in, in some, at some of the other events, and um, you know, I I I only wish I had thought to stay longer because I would have loved to have seen people on Sunday. I just forgot that it was a holiday weekend. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I thought, oh, we have to go back to school. Um, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to reach out to who I can while I'm there. And, and um, yeah, what a, what a gift. It was so great talking to you guys. Well, it was well, so great having you, you here. I've got a soccer game. Otherwise, I would stay longer. My son's playing soccer tonight, <laughs> so I got to get him fed. Sure. Well, Thank you so much, sure. Crystal. We appreciate you calling in. Yes. Have a great really show. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good evening. Bye bye. Hello, Take Two Radio. Who have we got? I've got Lauren B. Martin. How are you? Hey, well, hi, hi, Lauren. How are you? I'm so good. And thanks. <laughs> Glad well, that to be is here great. Well. Mm-hmm. Okay. So Lauren, thank you so. for calling in. Yes, yeah. thank you so much for calling in. And this is your first time with us, isn't it? I do it's, believe so. It, well, not my first time with the with the with the the charity. Um, I hosted uh, an event with them last year. And so this will be right. my second uh, second event. But I think this is my first time calling in with you guys. Yeah. And we're so happy to have you. Well, thanks back at you. <laughs> and we miss you on daytime. Oh, my goodness. Well, you know, me too. But what's, what's been really great, I was listening to uh, Crystal, who, you know, is uh, – I'm such a fan. Um, one of the fantastic things about what what is happening is, you know, all of the wonderful things in this web series. So, you know, I'm on I'm on Pride now, which is on uh, Amazon, and I just started shooting Asunder, which will I believe be on Amazon next year. And um, I have a series that I wrote that we just attached a pretty big executive producer to, called Reality Set Thin. That uh, we shot the first five episodes too. So, you know, it's constantly constantly evolving and it's great that some of these things, um, Tony Head and Darrell Anthony, who are both in Pride, you know, are also in Asunder. And it's just it's a it's a small family, you know. I think every time we all get into a room together, everyone's trying to think of, well, how can I cast you in this or it's a, it it truly is a family. And when 
like Crystal was saying as well, it is a very different um, – it's a different type of set. It's a different type of schedule. And certainly when, you know, I'm, I've been acting as producer on a lot of the smaller projects that I've been doing, and it's a different, it's a different mindset for sure. But it's lovely to be able to employ some, some people that are your friends and you get to hang out with folks that you trust implicitly. I mean, the relationship you build on sets, um, again, seconding what Crystal was saying, is um, – is a very different type of thing. There is a real trust to be able to cry that hard, go that far, you know, um, emote that many emotions together, uh, you know, and catch it on film and put it back out there. Um, so, uh, so that's what's going on with me, you know. And this this event on Friday is so much fun. Um, this will be the second one, and trying to put the sailors out to sea last year. Robert Newman, my handsome, 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 fantastic singer that he is. Um, Eileen Kristen popped in. Uh, we're going to see who's who's in town. You know, part of being a, a Friday night for a New York actor is usually someone's on stage somewhere. So hopefully we'll get some great singers. And um, it's just a super fun way to kick off the the weekend, to let people let their hair down a little bit, uh, find mm-hmm. their inner, inner karaoke goddess and gods. And... Um, for me, I can't, you know, I get to get to kind of hold hands with some of these folks and and sing songs and, you know, have some tequila and get silly, and that's what we do. <laughs> oh, that is, well, you that know, amazing. It does. That does. It makes me want to just come up there and just hang out for the whole weekend too, you know, and um, and I just it's might. Way, you never know. A, you should. You should. I mean, it's a way to get to. I think that. Um, you know, someone, a, a fan who became a friend had said this to me uh, many years ago. And, you know, when you, you unlike um, primetime television and unlike, you know, some movies, the, the daytime experience for many people was something that, you know, it was a familiarity on a daily basis. You know, you turned on your television, it was your lunchtime, it was your, you know, you back in the day I'm dating myself, but you put it on your VCR or what have you. And, you know, getting to actually hang out with people who were a big chunk of your life. Um, now television is so very different. We're watching it on our, our, our watches. We're watching it on our yep. iPhones. We're watching it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are in, you know, in this thing about web series, uh, which is, you know, the natural progression for daytime television is that it is, uh, we are controlling our content, you know, in a different way. Um, and we are having, you know, it, it is quicker bits of television. So for people to get a chance to actually hang out with you, see you with your hair down um, in in the reality of, of who you are, it's um, it's very humbling uh, for, I think, any, any actor to get to see people who, because in, on television we don't get the applause at the end of the, the show. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're not in a live room. Yeah. And you get to, to to see people who have become your friends throughout this opportunity. Autism is extremely important to me. My little brother is autistic. And especially now, um, what is happening, and not to get on a government tangent, but what is happening in our government and what is happening in regards to medical research across the board, not just folks that are on the spectrum or autistic, uh, it's really important. I encourage everybody who's listening, no matter what cause it is for you, you can socially get together, create an, an event that gets people out and gives people a reason and to put, whether it's $5 or $10, making a difference in your own humanity is extremely important. And I think that events mm-hmm. like this give, give folks um, inspiration to do some of these things on their own. So I think it's great. Oh, yeah, most oh, yeah. definitely. And, you know, um, I, I think that that really is how people can make a difference is, you know, not only support events such as this, but also, as you said, you know, get out and, and do something. Start a little fundraiser, you know, do a small event, and maybe it'll become a big event, you know, and, and go from there. And another point I wanted to make um, to touch on that you mentioned, and that is how daytime has transitioned to web series. And I think for fans in particular, when a lot of the shows were taken off the major networks, it Mm -hmm. um, has really been a saving grace for, for fans everywhere. Um, 
you know, because we're still able to see a lot of you out there doing something, and uh, we still feel connected. You know, every day for sure, we turn for on sure. the television, you know, and all afternoon we'd be watching, you know, our favorites and our favorite shows. And when that went away, the disconnect came, but this has kind of helped reconnect. And it has helped us remain connected, and um, and so for sure. I think for you sure. know it's kept it alive, which has been a great thing. Well, one of the things that I'm always so proud of, and I think that I think anybody, you could speak to anybody in the in the genre, you know, daytime was the the template or the you know the beginning to really talk about some difficult subjects in life. You know, mm-hmm. we. More, more than more people think about it, besides the romance and the rolling around and the princes and then and the bath and bubble baths and satin sheets of stuff. You know, it was also a format to to talk about difficult things. And I think that mm-hmm. so many inspiring people from daytime, Crystal certainly being uh, in the forefront, Martha Byrne being another one. You know, hopefully people will look at myself as you know one as a as a as a producer of some of the shows. You know. I look at I look at Katie McLean for not you know all of these people really getting a chance years and years and years of being in front of the camera and working with some tremendously talented directors and producers making a TV show a day you realize we made a TV show a day it was crazy and and yeah. getting a chance to to take all that these wonderful. Um, women in particular, I'll say, are creating phenomenal roles for women as we age and as, we, as we're as we moving forward. And, you know, no one here is dead. There's still a pulse. And it's an amazing, amazing, amazing thing um, that we're getting to do. And I think that, again, I go back to, you know, starting kind of grassroots thing. You, any single person can start or, you know, can create a party, charge a sort of you know, a cover charge and make a difference. We look at what's happening in our in our society today, in the world, as far as all this natural, uh, you know, devastation, in our medical community. There is a, you know, if the only thing you can do, you don't have to train for a marathon, you can come and sing karaoke. You don't have to, do, you know, it's, there's no limitations to what your time and energy can do, you know, and I think that um, I commend Wendy and, and, and David and everybody who has really been um, behind uh, doing something that is broader than themselves, and that's what, that's how, that's how we all should be thinking, especially especially now, for sure. Oh, well said. Well said indeed. Um, we got somebody else that has called in, and I want to see who it is. Hello. Okay, I might, I might say hi, and then I'm going to have to step off. <laughs> okay. Sure. sure. Who, do we have, who do we have holding? Uh, you have Jerry. Hey, Jerry. How are you? Hi, Jerry. I'm good. How are you guys? We're doing good, sir. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm feeling fine. It's a good show. I listen to Crystal and uh, Lauren. And <laughs> Jerry, I'm sending you big, 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 fat smooches. I hope I get. I know my events on Friday, and I don't know if I'm going to get to hear your hear your lovely voice behind the microphone. But if you can swing by on Friday, I expect a squeeze. And well, Lauren. Um, you and Crystal have become goddesses uh, for me. You're 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 my heroine. <laughs> You brought well, a whole new that. dimension to the weekend. Oh well, listen, I will I will share that light with Miss Crystal Sabelli any okay. day of the week. Any day of the week, I'm a big fan. Listen, y'all, I'm got, I've got a dog that is circling around in circles uh, in here, which means something that someone has to go outside. But Perry <laughs> and 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 when hopefully I don't know if Michael's coming on or Liz, but. Sending everybody big, big, big hugs, and I look forward to seeing you all next week. Thank you for your hospitality, and come on out and see me at the Residence Inn on on October 6th. Sing a song, okay? I'll talk to you all soon. Thank you, Lauren. All right. Take care, Lauren. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Jerry, it's so nice to have you back on again. Well, thank you very much. It's a very informative show. I love it. Crystal's uh, Crystal's format because she's had to leave to go to a soccer thing. I hear. But, yeah, she uh, did. For her to schlep in and uh, do this whole thing on Saturday is just uh, marvelous for our event. And and if you get Crystal and uh, Hillary together, you know it's going to be some kind of an afternoon. <laughs> oh, I can. 
You you make Dawn and I want to go up there right now. I talk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is for only, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. So and then on Sunday we take over with uh, the the brunch uh, with yes. uh, with Bloss and Liz and Jerry will be there sort of bleary eyed. I I would imagine. It's, I think it starts at nine thirty. But we've got some secrets to reveal, and I'm going to bring my uh, photograph album, and so that should be a good time. And, of course, two hours after that ends, we, uh, after our naps, we recover and go to the bar barbecue. <laughs> oh, God. Where, where Michael <laughs> Rear is going to lead us all. That's always scary. Poor Mikey. So, yeah, um, and, and I, I, I like... I um, I noticed that O'Leary was billed on uh, on the event site as uh, the favored bower, which might get an argument from Peter Simon, who's going to be there. Know. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Dr. Bauer might have something to say about that. That's so true, so true indeed. And you know something, I was, I was thinking to myself um, as you were talking about that just now, that uh, I guarantee you these bower barbecues are not scripted like they were on television. <laughs> I think I know that. No, they're yeah. a little looser than they were on television, yeah. yeah. Although, yeah, you know, um, I can only imagine. if people want to get in the mood, they can always go on YouTube and see several uh, of our barbecue years. And I did that myself last week, and I, I saw some amazing things. <laughs> and I was wishing I was getting paid for it, too. But but I, I saw uh, oh, a very young Grant Alexander. I saw a very young Elizabeth Kiefer. Robert Newman came bombing in one year and got tossed out, and uh, Peter Simon was flipping burgers. It was very, it was a lot of fun, and I'm, I'm surprised YouTube has almost everything. So, if people want to get in the mood before they come to the weekend, they should do that. Yeah, there's one thing for sure. If you want to find it, if YouTube doesn't have it, it's not out there. And um, I know, it's but that amazing. was. But I can only imagine what that would be like to uh, to attend that event and to see all of you there, and it's like a little mini God in Light reunion, really, and and to see it, you know, in an unscripted format, just having the best of time, and that's a great time for, you know, everyone involved, I'm sure. Well, that's what it is. It's a reunion, and uh, last year, which was the first Bauer barbecue done off off camera, People were just ecstatic about it because it it's very loose. It's question and answer. It's game time. It's trivia time. And you also get burgers and you get food. <laughs> and believe me, the food was better than it was on television. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and the I think um, for any Guiding Light fan who watched that show, as I did and as David did, it's, you know, those yes. those barbecues were synonymous with Guiding Light. And you just, you know, when those started being written into the script and the show, uh, that was something that fans just looked forward to every year, those Bauer barbecues, because it was the one time of year that the whole cast would, would be in those scenes. And, you know, and, and for a few days, you know, it seemed like it went on for days, but it seemed like for that time that they were showing that, it was um, everybody's problems were put aside and, you know, you had the fireworks. And, of course, you always wondered if the food was really, if it if it was as good as it looked on television. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, it was, but it was terrible. Awesome. <laughs> was it as good as everyone thought it was? Uh, no, no, we made it look good, but nobody really ate too much because, for one thing, it was uh, if you ate too much, you got sleepy, and you couldn't get sleepy because the days were 12 hours long. And they usually shot it for three days, and they would air it on, uh, you'd start seeing it on Thursday, Friday, and then you'd see the end of it on Monday, and as close to the July 4th date as they could get on each year. And you're right, everybody in the cast was usually involved, and a lot of people who were uh, not seen yet were introduced at uh, the Bauer Barbecue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's so anyone true. who was anyone. Yeah, and I, I remember my first Bauer Barbecue. I got kicked out, but Bert Bauer kicked me out. Because <laughs> in, in those days, <laughs> in those days, I was a villain, and I was associated yeah. with. Uh, Roger Thorpe, 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 of course, and uh, when I showed up at the Bauer Barbecue, Bert very kindly asked me to leave the premises, which I did. 
Oh, my gosh, Jerry, that just triggered, like, this serious throwback memory in my mind because it you did. were you were known as a lawyer for so long and, and a good guy to the end that I totally forgot that when you started on there, you were the, a bad guy. Like, you were not so nice. I to, that totally – see, you just totally redeemed yourself. And, you redeemed. <laughs> and this particular guy in like fan completely forgot that. Yeah, for the first three years, I was very bad, and uh... – my brother Justin was the very good brother, yes. uh, the, mm-hmm. the good Marla. And when I came to town, I made a pass at his wife and then proceeded to be the lawyer for Roger. And so I got a very b- bad reputation uh, very quickly. And that's why Bert said it would be better if you weren't here. <laughs> oh, know, yeah, I, I, understandably I, so. And then, but then for years, I was, you know, a pillar of the community, and I went to the bar yeah. and barbecue, and everybody was happy to see me, but... Not at the beginning. No. That's the part yeah. I forgot because I forgot that Ross made a play for Jackie. That's a, matter of fact, that was my first day. That was a good first day, right? Yeah. I, <laughs> for sure. I rang the doorbell and to, at Justin's house, and Justin wasn't home and his wife was. So I introduced myself to her and proceeded to make a pass at her. So that was a good first day. You know, it just brings back so many memories for Don and me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's Most a long definitely. time ago. We're, ta- we're talking uh, 1978. Yeah, that's when I started. Yeah. That's when I began watching. Oh, yeah, my God. Yeah, and I, I, I don't think it was too much longer past that, and... I just know that once I started, it was it was my favorite daytime drama, and the writing, Jerry, was just so incredibly good. I mean, it's so interesting how writing in daytime is, the way writing is in daytime now versus the way it was back then, because there was something special about Guiding Light and the way that show was written and how the families were really, um, you know, they were staples of Springfield. And, you know, and you knew who they were, and it was just, you just really felt like as a viewer that you were part of that. And um, and it's just so different now to view, you know, to see daytime drama as as it is. And um, writing is still good, but it's just it was just a different world back then. It was. Yeah, it was. And, and if you were to go to, uh, to YouTube and watch most anything before 19, let's say, 1985, you will be surprised how long the scenes are and how sometimes there are long pauses and you're watching somebody think, well, that doesn't happen today. I mean, it's it's Mm -mm. very much, the the scenes are way shorter and there's lots of editing involved, but uh, it was much more like reading than it was uh, watching daytime. Oh yeah. But it was so entertaining and so realistic. Um, You know, you just, um, as Lauren was, mentioning earlier, I mean, there were so many issues that were covered in daytime that that daytime helped to introduce to the public as being things that, that were often not thought to be talked about, and then all of a sudden, daytime gave those issues a platform, and it really helped to raise awareness in a lot of cases, and um, so, you know, I think viewers as a whole could identify with especially the guy might on so many different fronts outside of just the great acting or, you know, all of you as actors um, bringing us a wonderful show every day. It, it was a connection that um, I think for a lot of God and light fans, I was telling Pam earlier um, when I was speaking with her today, I said, you know, the thing that I loved about God and light, I said, as a fan, I still haven't fully gotten over that they're off air. I said, because of all the daytime dramas that, that left the canvas, they're the ones that I I would have never thought would have had to um to you know not go on and I said it's, it's been very disheartening you know so but I'm thankful that you guys there have been other opportunities for all of you to go out and act and and have us still see you somewhere doing something um which has been it's been not the same but it's still been great to have you out there and then the stars and stripes is just another facet to that um, that gives you know, folks, an up-close and personal opportunity. Well, you know, um, when, when Lauren mentioned that about the, the soaps and them, the daytime people leading the way to certain causes and everything, for scripted shows, 
is little known fact that Guiding Light was the first scripted show to mention the word cancer. And they did this in uh, the late 50s, I think 1959 and 1960, when the character of Bert had uh, had cancer and they actually uh, were examining the whole thing from diagnosis to what do we do to, you know, to resolution. And no, I mean, the word cancer had been mentioned on news shows, but never on the scripted show. And uh, Guiding Light was the first to go. Yeah, I think um, I think God and Light was a was kind of a leader in daytime in the fact that you know there were a lot of risks that were taken that really resonated with with uh, viewers, and um, undoubtedly, it I think that was again another way that viewers could really feel connected beyond just the stories themselves. Um, although the stories were incredibly realistic, so it was um, you know people could identify with storylines and say oh my gosh that has happened in my life or that's happening now and you know and you're glued to the tv every day (laughs) kind of thing um so yeah i mean i think you got to change agents in a lot of ways well even back in the 1930s when i was on radio the first time it was gunning light was the first show to have people speak with an accent i mean papa bar was obviously a a german person who had come, come to the united states and so it was a refugee problem. It was uh, all sorts of things that were dealt with, even though it was just a 10-minute radio show at that time. The, uh, an accent other than the normal Midwestern accent had never been heard. Yeah, I, so many firsts. And, I mean, it just makes for some great trivia now, doesn't it? It really does, yeah. <laughs> it does. I think we actually have someone else that has called in. Let me see who's on the line, Jerry, if you don't mind. Um, hello, Take Two Radio. Hi there. How are you? Hi. Hi Wendy. Who have we got? Uh, this is this Wendy? Uh, you've got Wendy. Yes. Hi. Hi, Wendy. Hi. Nice of you to call Hi. in. Hey, everyone. How are you tonight? We're feeling the heat. <laughs> so Thank are we you. up here, 98 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> yep, just about. Oh my goodness. Yep. Hi, Wendy. Hi. Did you hear Lauren and uh, and uh, Crystal? I oh yes, I did. They were fabulous. They, they, Fantastic. They were wonderful. Yeah. Our yes, Friday girl, absolutely. our Saturday girl. Yeah. Yep, I can't wait. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna. We were just oh. hashing out about the bar barbecue and uh, and how Rick. He supposedly a uh, favorite Bauer. <laughs> as, as yeah, he's, he's everyone's online. favorite Bauer. Yeah. Um, well, I, I, yeah, Ed I can't. Might I, have something to say for that. Right? <laughs> well, good. I I hope he does. That'll be some fun banter, of course. I'm sure those two together will will really uh, make the event fun. Funner. They were, yeah, I was telling them. Oh yeah. I, I I assured them the food would be much better than it actually was on television. Absolutely. And then I, I believe, uh, yeah, we, we're we've got some more homemade stuff coming, and uh, I think yes. Michael's going to do another um, where he auctions off uh, somebody to get a chance to um, act with him, you know, uh, read some oh, scripts good. together. So, and of course the trivia, we're going to make it tougher this year, and uh, okay. yeah, we're really excited. We're really going to really going to have a good weekend, and, and with Venice on on board, this is it's what a great weekend. I mean, this is going to be great. Oh, yeah, no doubt. And I have to ask, whose idea was it to bring back the Barrow Barbecue? Mine. <laughs> let me tell you how that happened. Good for you. Let me that tell is you. awesome. Well, well, let me explain it to you now. I, I do live in Maine. I don't want to make this lengthy. Um, I live in Maine, um, but I'm an avid Yankee fan. So my daughter and I went down to New Jersey. We wanted to drive. I didn't want to stay in the city and park my car and pay outrageous fees. So I found a residence in the closest to the city where I would have free parking. Mm-hmm. And my daughter and I were walking through the lobby, and I saw a barbecue, um, a big open courtyard barbecue. And I thought, oh, my God, I wonder if we could do that. And, you know, I went up and talked to the events lady and explained the charity. She also, you know, she has a brother that's autistic. Um, I think most of you know I have a son on the spectrum. Yes. And I thought, how much would that cost us? 
and when she told me, I just about cried because we were we were paying um, you know over ten thousand dollars in the city to do one event, and, oh and and rightly so. I mean, it was Times Square, but but at this particular hotel, it was five hundred dollars as opposed oh my to ten thousand. So wow. that's how that barbecue was born, and you know, I called I called Michael and I said, "What do you think?" And he's like, "Absolutely, you know, let let's do it. Let's do it for autism." And that that's how that that started, and and to back it up a little bit, we when we started in '04, we kind of nestled ourselves into the Guiding Light Fan Club weekend, so it was easy. You know, people were already coming, so we mm-hmm. you know we created this event. Jerry, Liz, and I created this event for the bowling in the city, and it was just it was a no brainer. People were already there. Mm-hmm. Well, when the shows ended, we no longer really had, you know, fan clubs coming. So we had um, the bowling event standing alone. And then after a while, I'm like, well, why don't we create some more events to to get more people in, you know, give them more um, bang for their buck. And that's how we started with the karaoke and the Venice and the barbecue. So that that's kind of the birth of all of that to expand it and to do it for the charity, of course. Yeah, it is. Gosh, now, thank you for sharing that. Oh, go ahead. Let me tell you that uh, that uh, piece of Wendy story is it's it's terrific because the location last year had people talking like almost as much as the event. It's just so perfect. There, you mm-hmm. you know, we're sort of all by ourselves, but there's a lot of space. There's indoor. There's outdoor. There's bathrooms. There's a grill. I mean, it is just the perfect location, and. Everybody who came up to me and, and uh, said what a good time they had mentioned the location, how comfortable they felt. And I'm yeah. sure that's going to be true this year, too. Cause it's, yeah, it's I mean, the free place. parking, every venue we're hosting, every event we're hosting is right there in that venue. You can't go wrong. And they gave us a special rate. I mean, oh. it doesn't get better than that. You know, no, it's, three, you're talking it out. it's three. It, and if you still want to go to the city and get get your New York fix on, it's um, three bus stops to Port Authority right from the hotel. And that was the reason I selected that hotel when I came to see the Yankees. I wanted an easy access to the city to to hop on over to um, to the Yankee Stadium. You know, and free parking. You can't go wrong. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. a lot of people, the, the location was perfect because they could have a conversation. I mean, it was right. It was loud enough with music, but quiet enough to have a conversation, and uh, that that is not always the case in a bowling alley. <laughs> no, I, I can well, imagine. The thing that that just strikes me about all this, um, and the fact that it's just going to be a phenomenal weekend, is the is the fact that for anyone who grew up or watched the Guiding Light. Um, from beginning to end, and came to that era where the Bauer barbecues were so synonymous with the show, and mm-hmm. always said, "Man, I would love to. I wish I could be there, and you know, and go to a Bauer barbecue." And now people are getting that opportunity, right? And yeah, doing they it are. for a great cause. <laughs> In a great go wrong. Cause. Oh yeah. No, it's like you know? it's a win-win for everyone involved. Right. And we're and just so you know, we're all volunteers. We, nobody gets paid. Nobody pays our way. All of Jerry's elves are just that. We just um, are volunteers. We take time off from work. We hustle all year long, and we come down and put these on. So it is. It is a labor of love. Well, God bless all of you. And that. Well, thank you. That is. Just, that means a lot, you know, um, to um, to know that. You guys believe in this event as much as the fans do, and you know, and it ends up being a great event for everybody involved. Right. Thank you. It is. It is. So, Wendy, my question to you is, um, basically, I want if you can tell us in your own words what a child is like with autism spectrum. Oh, wow. Um, Well, my son now is 26, and, you know, I've shared the story before. When he was six years old or five years old in kindergarten, we knew something was different because he could read everything, but he couldn't handle the music, and he couldn't handle the crowd, but he knew everybody's bus number. So we knew something was going on, 
wasn't sure what. So um, he was, you know, went and got tested in I think '98. I never heard of the word Asperger's. So and the internet, you really, it was brand new. So for us, yes. we were kind of in the dark for a couple of years, kind of in denial. I mean, this was a child that was really gifted, you know. So what? How, how did this happen? What does this mean? But you know what? We, you know, as parents, and 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 let me, I'm gonna uh, go into detail, tell a little bit more about this. But as parents. We did everything we could to make sure, you know, he had services in place, um, made sure he was on the right track. But not every parent has that ability. And that's why it's so important to raise funds for autism because early, early uh, intervention is the key. He's just lucky he had parents. And I don't mean to say lucky, but that he had advocates that any time I had an issue, I I was down at the school or my husband was or whatever. Um, but but the early intervention for my son proved to be great on the other end. Um, he came last year; it was his first year. Jerry met him; um, they all met him. But, but I mean, this is a young man that drives. He has his own car. He lives on his yep. own, and he's he's high functioning. But he couldn't have; he might not have been that way had he not had services. And that's why this is so important. It's very important. And, and, yeah, and so that that's you know. There, but no one child is the same either. So the the yeah. key is to, to make sure you're the best advocate advocate you can be, and if you're not, you kind of make sure somebody, you know, is there for you. And, and part of my, and I've shared this before, part of my um, reason why I wanted to switch over to autism is I was, I was going to turn 50, and I'm thinking, who's going to take care of my child when I'm not here? You know, yeah. the aging parents, What? who's going to step in for them? You've got to have services in place. And that's, you know, that's that's one of our big focuses. And, and autism is the, the highest diagnosed in children, and yet it's the least funded. That does not make sense, does it? No, it does not. No. So so that's that's my background to that. And and we, you know, I had a discussion with Jerry and Liz when we hit our 10 year and I said, "Hey, you know, we've we've raised a quarter of a million dollars for the American Cancer Society. Can we can we try another charity in there like absolutely whatever you want." And that's how that started. That's beautiful. Thank you. And that's part of the puzzle is why is it underfunded? And that's why we're trying to get people to talk about it, to think about it, to go to other events other than ours, to get this underfunded thing turned around and at least get it up to the middle of of the ratings because autism is, and for every parent, like when they just express, what's going to happen when I'm gone? And that's why we got to get a handle on more things than we have a handle on right now is that we have to free not only the autism spectrum person, but the parents of them to say it's going to be better. It's going to be, let's not say cured, but let's say it's going to be better. And that's why this event is important to all of us. Yes, that's true. And, and, and you just I don't think you could ever do enough to um, to totally grasp you know, or help people to understand just how important this is and what, you know, and how every um, everything that you do matters in terms of making a difference in the life of, of a child who has autism and to the families who are trying to deal with it, whether it be finding resources or advocates or just funding to help take care of their child. Um, so they can have, you know, a good, a high functioning quality of life as as much as possible. Oh, that's exactly right. Yep. Um, the Autism Society of America is is where we send the funds to, and I just got an email from a Matt Asner, who is Ed Asner's son, who has a brother that has autism, and he has a child that has autism. I mean, this is, you know, the the numbers just keep going up. So what's going to happen is, is in our society, people with autism are going to also be our workforce. I mean, you you know, this mm-hmm. this is reality. Yeah. So you've yeah. got to yeah. be, you've got to have supports in place for these individuals so they can be, like you said, high functioning and make a difference. You know, you don't want them sitting on, sitting on a couch and not doing anything. 
I mean, you want them to be able to, you know, get get some skills and and get out there. So, I mean, that's 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 really where where it all is. Yeah, definitely. And I think I think um, adequate pr- um, treatment and pr- you know, as they're young um, and helping them the early along the way, yes, in, it makes all the difference. You know, when they get older, in terms of being able to, you know, to drive a car and to live on their own and be self-sufficient and functioning, um, that otherwise they may not be able to do if they didn't have the resources in place. It is, and you know, and and it is one of those things where you hear more and more where children have this and they're being diagnosed right. with it, and all the more reason why the awareness needs to be raised through the roof, and um, you know, and all the money that can be raised needs to be raised to go towards this. Absolutely. Well, Wendy, how um would you let the listeners know how uh, people can get tickets for this event so they can come out and join you guys next weekend? Absolutely. Go to our website. The easiest way to, to purchase a ticket is go to www.daytimestarsandstrikes.com. That's our same website we've had since 04. Um, it has evolved over the years. Um, but at all the events are listed. You you can um, purchase a single ticket, a bundle ticket, or you can sponsor us. There are many ways to to help us out. This year we've had a lot of sponsors, and my son, um, I created a team, Matthew, and and he has he has got a, over three thousand under his name. So that's oh awesome. My God. Oh wow! And Wonderful. we and that we don't that just goes straight to the charity, and and a lot of people don't understand that we don't we get there on our own we take our own time off and that all goes straight straight to that autism society of america so wow. whatever you can That's donate impressive. yeah yeah and we've got some Every great sponsorship yeah sponsorship boards this year um we'll have them up at at each event you know so big 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 deal to to have people sponsor is your son going to be out there again this year Yes, he is. Absolutely. He can't wait. He had such a great time last year. And he knows oh, now. He has a photographic memory. He has a photographic memory, so he knows every single person there. <laughs> How about so that? He, you know, yeah, uh, there, I'll share a story with you. Right before 911, I had won a, a studio tour with Liz and Jerry, and so um, I had never taken him to the city, so I, I took him. I, he was 10 years old. I took him down, and we were in the green room waiting, and in walks Crystal Chappelle, and I shared this story with her. And she walks in, and she goes, hello, young man, who are you? And he goes, hi, I'm Matthew. You're Crystal Chappelle. You play Olivia. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so and she just looked at him like, wow. You know, and that he just has a photographic memory. It's just part of, part of uh, Matthew. So he, he can't wait. He loves Jerry and Liz, by the way. That's awesome. That is so awesome. And I'm, I mean, I'm just so thankful that, you know, what a blessing that he is high functioning and he is, you know, his quality of life is so great today and, and, you know, and thanks to all that you did, you know, early on, you and your husband and your mm-hmm. family and um, and just being able to, to advocate for him to know what to do to get him the help he needed. And it's, it's just made all the difference. And, I mean, what a success story. I mean, that is, I mean, you know, it, I don't know that it gets any better if if you have to have autism that the outcomes are just his outcomes have been so positive, and um, absolutely. And then to be able to come and be a part of this event, and I think him being there is so critical because it lets participants see how you know this is what absolutely. it can be if if yeah. we can raise enough money and get it out there, the, raise the awareness, and help people understand this is the outcome. You know, and and That's right. it can be this. This way. can be, the, um, yeah. I was going to say this can be your outcome, but the, but the biggest right. thing here is not everybody has the resources. I'm in Maine. True. I thought, do I need to move somewhere else? You know, I it, you know when yeah. we received that diagnosis, I'm like, am I in the right place? But we were. You know, we we really hunkered down, but not everybody has that skill. That's the that's, that's the so part. True. You know that that's. That is really scary. That's frightening because what is going to happen to yeah. that child? Yeah. Right. So. Right. And, you know, education is the key. And I think being able to provide people with inform- the, the critical information they need, you know, like in your case, you just you made a great point, you know, do I need to move? 
to be near right. where I can get the resources needed for my son. And, and I'm sure, you know, there any parent that has ever had a child be diagnosed with autism, they've asked themselves those questions. I mean, those are critical questions um, that come to mind naturally and so many others, you know, in addition to that. And um, right. And so to be able to, to have the knowledge is power and to be able to have that piece of it just to know who to call and what to do uh, upon finding out from the moment you know you know you're equipped and that can make all the difference absolutely and that's and that's our goal to help these children diagnosed with autism become successful adults with autism mm-hmm. that's yeah. what the weekend that is, is about yeah that's right uh, that's our message yeah. well it's going to be a wonderful weekend indeed um and well, i know that you. the fans the fans are looking forward to this event um and, uh, you know, I, I, gosh, it makes me want to come up there. If I could swing it, I would. Um, and I just might. Um, I, it's, you know, just to be able to see it all. And that barrel barbecue, wow. <laughs> and you know <laughs> what? We just, let, we, we just let go, too. You know, I mean, and, and, you know, people come up just like they did to Jerry when we, when it was for the American Cancer Society. But you know how many people have come up to me? Or emailed me and said, you know what, I have a child. You know what, you know what you're yeah. doing is making such a difference. You know, thank you. And that that speaks volumes. You know, oh, how yes, how many does. people can have soap actors come, you know, on their own, and they they too are volunteers can just come for the weekend, let loose, and support the cause. That's awesome. Yeah, it really is, and it 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 really kind of just ties it all up for you as far personally. And as your involvement with this has become as it is, uh, just to remind you, you know, why you're doing this. Um, you know, your initial reason may have been because of your own personal experience, but just recognizing through that that there's a great need for this sort of thing. And um, this fundraiser makes all the difference, you know. Well, thank you. Thank you. Well, it is going to be a wonderful event. I know that um, the fans are looking forward to this. And uh, once again, I think you will have outdone yourself. And uh, certainly hope this is going to be something that's going to go on for many, many years to come. I hope it grows to the point that you guys have to start doing this and have multiple events a year where you do it in different locations yeah. and stuff. That would be awesome. Well, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. You're on to something, but I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Well, I tell you, you know, if you put it out there, I, I think I think you would have fans from all over coming just just to attend and um and to be a part of it and to feel like that they were giving back to to the actors that have given to them for so many years. Um, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. for me personally, God and Light was not only a part of my teen years but my young adult years until it went off the air. And yeah. and I told Jerry earlier, I, to this day, I still haven't quite gotten over the fact they're off the air. I mean, it's just like really, but. I mean, this, these events are a great opportunity for fans to get out there and see everyone, but also to really just um, feel like they are making a difference and, and giving back to something that is so important, you know. And it, it is a team effort. It takes us all to make that difference. Well, you guys, I'm going to go now, but thank you for both of you for having this event on, on your program and uh, promoting it because it makes all the difference. And Wendy has done such a good job. Just ask her after I'm gone how year one was and how it <laughs> compares to year 13. So <laughs> all of you, have a good night. I'm going to say good night. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye Gary. Night, Thank Gary. you, Gary. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Wendy, I'm thank sure you, you have so another much. caller on. Yeah, I'll let no. you go. I'm sure you have another caller on to, to take over. Uh, actually, not yet, but <laughs> everyone was so wonderful. Awesome. Well, I know Michael and Liz are going to bounce on. They'll be there. Oh, they're they're due to come on? Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right. But I, I'm like, uh, like you guys, I started in 1979 watching the show and, and what a heartbreak it was for it to go off the air, definitely. I was a teenager oh, yeah. watching it. Yeah. Well, you know, and while we're waiting for Liz and Michael to call in, if you've got time, Wendy, let's just chat a little bit about, you know, reminisce about Guiding Light. Sure. Um, 
You know, I uh, personally, I know, and David can attest to this because he watched it as well, but, um, you know, there were so many different great storylines. And I was telling Jerry earlier, I don't know if you had dialed in yet when we were having this conversation, but I told him, I said, you know, the writing in daytime today is so different from back then because the storylines um, that that the writing on that show introduced so many different storylines that that brought forth topics that were kind of taboo to speak about publicly in society and you know and the guiding light kind of gave a platform to so many of those topics which helped people to identify and I said you know for me personally it was kind of like you know it wasn't just the great acting and the great storylines but there was a connection there you could identify with things that were they were acting about um yeah. absolutely and uh the, one of the biggest beyond one just, of the, Right. One of the biggest um, things for me was the Nola storyline, because I grew yeah. up in a big family and all her fantasies, and and I thought, oh, that I, I can identify with that, you know, just you oh, know, yes, that was I a know. great storyline. Yeah, she was. It she was, was great good. I mean, that whole. Yeah, but but what got me started when I very when I started watching, I worked down the street from my grandmother's house, who watched all her stories. So the first storyline was Hope and Alan. Yeah. And by the way, Hope is going to be at the the Bauer Barbecue. Oh, the how Bauer nice! Rousseau, the one that plays oh. Hope, yeah, yeah. And oh, she, wow. uh, that's how I got hooked with that summer of '79 when they were on yeah. that island. And uh, then when of course they were Morgan and island. Kelly, yeah. And then Morgan and Kelly and that whole you know scene came on and that got me hooked. It was like they, uh-huh. it was like they had the teenage storylines to get us hooked during the summer. We didn't have our VCRs, so I used to – go ahead. I was just going to say, I remember seeing Kelly on canvas for the first time, and I thought he was the best-looking guy I had ever laid eyes on, you know, (laughs) as a teenager. And I'm thinking, wow, where did they get him from? And you're like, he needs to just stay forever kind of thing. But, you know, I I have to say that of all the different storylines that I watched, um, on there to the very end. Uh, the whole Philip and Beth, Rick and Mindy era was undoubtedly my favorite time. Now, you know, that's the one side of it. Then you have the other side where you have Josh and Reva. And um, sure. and that was the thing. The Guiding Light was so instrumental about having so many front and center characters, and they were doing different storylines, and you just you just grew to love the different cast members. And the different characters. Um, and the whereas, you know, so today you might have one or two favorites, but The Guiding Light was a different right. story. There were too many to name. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, they had they had the the layers of it. Sure, I mean, I, you know, in my teens, it, you know, that just the Hope and Allen, just because that happened to be the summer, and then uh, the the Morgan and Kelly. But then, you know, as I got older, I mean, we were stationed in Germany, and what show did they have on the Armed Forces Network was Guiding Light. I lucked out. Mm. So, you know, I was able to keep up, you know, while I was in the Army. But um, then then the political stuff in 92, and that's when Bloss came about, and that, that yes. was huge. That, so they became my favorite couple because that was just spectacular, you know, all of that, mm-hmm. you know, when Liz Kiefer came on and whatnot. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, I love that era, too. And <laughs> Yep. Yeah, Jerry, Jerry and Liz just, they had a chemistry on screen and they were, and you know, it's just so neat that today that they, you know, initially headed up these events um, right. and are still going strong, you know, so seeing them off canvas in this setting, uh, doing these fundraisers is just, I think, just such a, a real treat for Guiding Light fans um, who love them on the show. And Jerry, you know, he mentioned that when he first, um, at the first Bauer barbecue that he was on when he started the show, he was bad guy. And I had totally forgotten that because Ross Marler had redeemed himself as this great, you know, lawyer and everybody's town lawyer. And, you know, and that just kind of became what it was. And, and I had forgotten that, you know, for his first couple years on the show that he was the bad guy that he was. You know, right, um, right. Was yeah, you're right. He did the recesses. <laughs> he did redeem himself, though. So that he was certainly good. did. Yeah, he really did. It was it was great to see him. You know, I always liked him uh, in that role, and he did such a phenomenal job. He's just a wonderful actor. And you know, um, I was talking to Pam earlier today, which um, she she's having a medical issue. I don't know if you knew that, but she's 
that's the reason why she's not here tonight. But um, but in any event, we were talking earlier, and you know, I just told her, I said, I just the thing about the guiding light that I always loved was just that you you got some incredible acting, and it was so oh. believable. And the thing that I think made me the saddest about it going off the air was. So many of those actors, they're they're doing many things and have since then. But it would be so great if some of the other um, remaining soaps that had been on air had picked some of them up, you know, or picked all of them up if they could have, or just tried to resurrect the show. <laughs> that would right. have been really cool. Well, <laughs> in in their defense, it might have been location. You know, I mean, the the shows True. that are still on the air are on the West Coast, and they have families on the East Coast, so that That's might true. have been tough to. To up and move, but you know, but the, true, I see, very the, true. I see, um, but I see, I see some of them on Blue Bloods. I mean, they're they're moving and grooving. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, Law and Order. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I see them getting out, and they're doing you know Broadway shows or off Broadway or whatever. But it seems like they're, you know, they're they're not idle. Oh, they're just no, in they're different still different around. formats. You know, they're still yeah, still definitely. very active doing their thing and and I think that's one of the great things about it is that um well this event that you guys put on it does give guiding light fans a chance to come see a lot of their faves from back in the day and you know Absolutely. once a year and really be a part of of a worthy cause and and be up close and personal with them you know and it's it's kind of like a right. mini reunion for them and and for the the former cast as well and but at the same time you know um as everything is kind of transitioned to, you know, to the web series, and now you have Amazon and you got Hulu, and they're they're incorporating a lot of this into those um, mediums. It it still gives fans that opportunity to see a lot of the Guiding Light cast doing other things in a lot of different places. And if you're lucky enough to live in New York and you've been able to see some of them on Broadway and stuff, it's that's a rare treat too. Um, so right. it's good to know they're still out there doing doing their thing. It is. Well, I'm hoping Michael calls in because he's got a lot on his plate, um, what he's doing outside of, you know, his the, the norm. So I'm hoping he calls in. I don't know what oh, he's yeah, got no. right now. But... So you have nobody on the yeah. line waiting for you? No. It's just no. it's just us three. Can you tell Don? <laughs> Don's, got the, it's, Don's got the controls. It's just us so. three. It's just us three. Yep. Huh. Yeah. Maybe they're I don't know. Maybe he must have had something else going on. I, but yeah, I'm pretty sure he's going to call in. Well, we've had a good evening so far. Well, thank you. Yes, it, it's it's been great. I mean, we're on year 13. Um, you know, still making a difference out there. We you know, we feel pretty pretty blessed to be able to to do it still and have people come out and support us and the actors as well. I talked to Nancy, Nancy well, Saint. Um, Albans today who played um, Michelle. Michelle Bauer and she's going to try mm-hmm. to be there for the, she's got a college reunion but she's going to do everything she can to get herself there oh that would be great that would yeah, be great, would um, be great. you know uh, when you first started this event Wendy what you know it, it was going back 13 years but when sure. you initially started this what kind of goals did you have um, as opposed to how it's, it's kind of evolved um, you know, to, how it all started was I actually started a, you know, online was, you know, was really the online fan clubs were hitting it. And yeah. I reached out to Jerry and Liz and said, hey, can I, can I be your, your fan club president, an online free thing? And they're like, sure. They had known me from coming to, to previous events. And um, I initially asked Jerry, I said, why don't we have a, a, Bloss, Bar- a Bloss Bowling for you? And he really, you know, I said, for, for the American Cancer Society. And he's like, oh, I don't know. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't think people will come. And so I let it go. And then he had his 25th anniversary party at um, the Guiding Light Studios. And his, I, I had made a scrapbook, and his wife invited me, so that was quite an honor to to go and and be there for that that big party. And we'd all kind of like he says or Crystal says, you're kind of sipping the wine, everybody's feeling loose. And I went up to his wife and I said, Hey, what do you think of a blast bowling? She's like, Absolutely, let's do it. And that's how it started. <laughs> how about that? 
Jerry's wife, Beth, said absolutely, and that. And then he said, "Go around and ask everybody else to come." And, and it was pretty much and just an all actor, you know, event. I just got lucky to to be able to come, and they all said they'd be there, and they were. And that's how it started. I mean, like like Jerry said, ask her how how our first year was. Yeah, it was really we didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> you know, we, we had uh, we had the crowd control bars up, you know, to keep people off the lanes, and and you know we didn't we didn't um, certainly didn't uh, secure the whole port authority because that's where we started. Um, we couldn't afford it, and but we had a good good group of people, good group of um, actors and fans, and I think we might have made five thousand dollars that year. Um, then the next year we we sold it out, you know. And then the third year, Guiding Light had gone off the air, and I was like, "What am I going to do?" You know, I still we still want to have yeah. this. And um, um, oh, what's her name? Marianne, who was one of the fan club presidents of Guiding Light, said, "When did just just invite everybody?" And I'm like, "Huh, yeah. okay." So that's when it became <laughs> Daytime Stars and Strikes. That's when. That's when we invited One Life to Live and As the World Turns and, and all my children and Guiding Light actors, and, and that's when that evolved even bigger. You know, we, we didn't wow, even have a Guiding Light fan club <laughs> weekend anymore. And that was brilliant. That was brilliant because, I mean, talk about being able to involve fans from all soaps and right. especially those that have gone off air. Um and right, I think, right. you know, as I, I was saying earlier, uh, once a daytime fan – Always a daytime always, fan, always. And, daytime and, fan. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, right. because I mean, of, I of what you and, said. And I mean, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, like you said, I mean, whether you were in college, you were in the military, or whatever, you always kept up with your stories. You know, That's I mean, right. you always had your you mm-hmm. always had your soap opera digest to read, or what? And then, then you know, the new magazines came out. I, I mean, I was in Germany getting my. You know my soap opera digest. Just to, and, and the funny thing over there is we were behind by three months. Oh really? <laughs> so, oh wow! Yeah. So I'd get a soap opera digest and I'd say, "Oh, whew, look what's coming up." <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, made sure I had that VCR ready. So yeah, oh, you're right. It oh, stayed yeah. with the, the families and generations, and you know that's that's a very special. So yeah, and and then Jerry had gone to One Life to Live. Too. So uh-huh. then it was, you yeah. know, then it was a huge. What are we gonna do? And it all worked out. He brought he brought his crew over, and and everybody embraced it. There was one time we had over sixty actors at Port Authority. Oh when God. We didn't have enough room on the lanes. <laughs> That's how. Oh big my that gosh! Was. Yeah, what a wonderful problem to have, you know? Yeah, we had over three hundred people there. I mean, it was it was nutty. So. Yeah, we're still going strong. Yeah, I mean, thirteen years later, with no end in sight, this is awesome, you know. And and I, Thank you. And like I said, once a daytime fan, always a daytime fan. You're always going to have the daytime fans are always going to want to come out and support this event, not only because it gives them an opportunity to support a worthy cause, but to see a lot but of but to their see favorite their favorites. Actors. Sure. Mhm. And sure. um and you know yeah. and that's an annual thing. And it's not something they get to do every time, you know, all the time. So it's it's um right. you know it's an annual thing where it really gets gives them the opportunity where they can plan for it year after year. And um, right. So it's that's an awesome thing, you know. And um. And so I'm really hoping, as I said earlier, I'm really hoping that this will expand into other areas because that I think um is gonna well you allow you, ha- you have to people. remember what. Yeah, but you have to remember one thing when you say other areas. Where are the actors? We, You know what I mean? They don't live in yeah. other areas. And it's a right, charity right. event, so we can't pay them to get to other areas. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. That's tough. I mean, we're not, yeah. you know, we're absolutely strictly donation, nonprofit. It goes into the charity, so we can't pay an actor to fly to to Chicago. You know that's right. why we've stayed stayed where we are. I know we have a lot of people that ask that, but that that's the true reason we can't. We it would be defeating the purpose of the charity. True, you well, know. that's so true. Yeah. And I, yeah. I mean, major kudos to you guys for being able to put all the money into the charity itself. Um, because right. I know there's a lot of nonprofits out there that don't have that capability, and um, mm-hmm. and that's 
that's a whole lot more meaningful, not only because the fans, anyone that supports this knows that it's going right into the charity, but also the charity is getting it um, to be utilized how it needs to be um, to help so many. And and that's a beautiful thing. And, um, and you know, I think it makes people just want to help all the more. Um, and for right. these actors... Um, you know, when you think about them donating their time to do this, and they're so excited about it, um, and they're not getting paid, they're just doing it of their own will that's, because that's they choose right. to, that really right. does speak volumes as to their, um, you know, dedication to it. Absolutely. And that's, that's what's so beautiful about this, this event. Well, that, mm-hmm. you, know, you know, many things, but, but for all of us to collectively come together as volunteers and make it happen is awesome. Oh, yeah, and I, I can imagine, I should have asked Jerry this because I, I didn't think about it at the time, but um, what it's like for him and the other actors to be able to come and, you know, and coming with the fans through the weekend, um, because for them, it's a reunion also. Um, exactly. He, he had mentioned that, you know, the Bower Barbecue in itself is a reunion of sorts, and um, so, you know, they're they're getting to see each other, but they're getting to see all the fans who supported them for so many years on the show, and um, and that's just a huge, a huge thing. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, where else can you go and, and you know, and, and one of the things, too, is network with your former colleagues. You know, hey, what are you doing? What are you up to? And, and, and right. to, to promote, you know, and to promote what you're up to, of course. I mean, it's it's a yeah. win-win for everybody. Oh, you know? yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it um, you know, it, it, there's just so many aspects of it. Of of well, of when you um, everybody. when you guys conclude this event, how long before you have to start planning the next event? Mm-hmm. Oh, as Jerry well, says, the next day. <laughs> <laughs> the next day. You know that that is that is what we do. I mean. Um, you know, we, I mean, we finalized everything. We, you know, we read a big check to the Autism Society of America, and then we say, okay, you know, let's let's look at the venue for next year. You know, can you know, let's let's see, is it open for October? And, and generally, it always is because we're so early on it. So absolutely. And then, you know, then we just it's just a month by month process. I mean, I I'm a full time postmaster for the U.S. Postal Service, so. It is a lot of extra hours outside of work to put it all together, as as every one of our people are full time employees. You know, every one of us has oh, yeah. a full time job. <laughs> you know, so it's oh, there's a lot of of work. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and, know, and a lot of times. Um, and oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to say major kudos to you because you know I know. Um, you know, I'm in radio on the side, and it's not my day job, and I know how difficult right. it is to juggle those balls between doing the full-time job thing and, you know, you're there and you've got to devote yourself to that and then leaving work and then you're devoting yourself to this other thing and you're doing it strictly because you have a passion for it and you want to do it. So it doesn't really feel like work, but it is work. It's a lot no. of work to plan something and to pull it off and it be successful. And then to go do exactly. it year after year, too, you know? You are correct. <laughs> it is. But <laughs> but I have a great team. I have a great team. I mean, we're all volunteers. We're all in it together. Um, I've had one girl, Marie, with me since day one. Um, and she's, you know, one of our creative geniuses that, that can really pull off anything. I'll just give her a call and say, hey, I need help with this blurb. What, what, what do you got? And she she will put it out in a heartbeat. You know, she just, oh, yeah. just a lot of creative people, you know. It's just And, and of course, uh, you know, the Facebook, the social media has been a tremendous help to us. So you know, oh, to yeah. get the word out. I mean, you think about when you guys started 13 years ago versus now, and um, how social media has evolved from then to now. Exactly. I mean, you didn't have the platforms and all the network, you didn't have the networking, you know, that you could connect the dots and put stuff out on blast to promote things the way you can now. So right. that, I'm sure, has helped really get the word out about your events. Yes, yes. And then, you know, we give it to the actors and say, hey, put this out, and boom. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a combination. Everybody's got their hand in it. So, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, Wendy, hang on a second. I think, we, 
I think okay. we've got somebody that's called in. Let's see who's on the line. Hello, okay. Happy Radio. Who's on the line? Well, it would be the creative genius Wendy was just <laughs> talking about. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hello. This awesome. is Marie. This is Marie, one of the uh, one of the elves. Oh, I've been hi, with the. Uh, hi, I've been with the event since year one, and I I could not be happier to be such a you know, involved in such a worthy cause. Well, as as we were, David and I were telling Wendy, you know, thank you for your dedication to this event. Um, you know, it's an honor for us to just be able to help, um, you know, allow you guys to come on and just talk about this because we feel like we have been a part of this from, you know, the last couple of years at least. And, um, and it's hard work. It's hard work to do this year in and year out, but the rewards always come when the events take place and you see the people show up and you've got, you know, all of the stars that come out and volunteer their time to be a part of this so gladly, you know. And um, so what has, Marie, what has been one of the most um, memorable um, things for you about this entire time that you've been involved with the with the charity? Well, you know, every year there's always surprises. There was the year that um... – we had actors auctioning the shirts off their back. Remember that, Wendy? I do. And, and that went for big bucks. <laughs> Those went for big bucks. That was that was always fun. Um, when we um, found Bullmore, they just they just really bowled us over with um, really really great great service. They were they were amazing, but. Just to watch that transition when we rebranded for autism and moving the venue out to New Jersey where, you know, we could put more dollars towards the the cause and spend, you know, have less, you know, outlay on the front end. You know, it really just transformed the whole event. And especially oh, yeah. when we added on two new in two new events last year with the barbecue and the karaoke, I think um, I think that's when we really kind of uh, exploded a little. Mhm. Well, and in and I way. told Wendy um, earlier one of the things about this barrel barbecue that I think for fans of Guiding Light, you know, growing up watching the show and you would see that, and that became such a synonymous part of the Guiding Light. I mean, you knew every year the uh, July Fourth we're going to have the Bower Barbecue, and it was it was always so much fun, and the whole cast got to be involved during that day or two that they filmed that, and you know, and you saw it, and and I can't tell you how many times I sat there watching that, going, "Gosh, I would love to go to a Bower Barbecue. How cool would it be to be at a Bower Barbecue and to bring this to life for the fans at this event?" Um, is not only nostalgic, but what a fun time everybody must have, um, especially since this is not a scripted thing now. You know, and watching the the, car- the, uh, the former cast be themselves. And the food is real. Putting on a barrel bar- barbecue. Yes, the food is real. Uh, uh, the, the, us elves are making the food, yeah. <laughs> you, well, yeah, you know, that's, that's how we were inspired to create this event every year, as you know on YouTube and and on Facebook and whatever, everybody gets nostalgic right around the 5th of July and everybody puts up their clips of their favorite Bauer barbecue moments and they all say, oh, I miss this so much and, man, I wish we could do this in real life. And, and we went, well, wait a minute. Why can't we? <laughs> Let's do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and That's and right. voila, the Bauer, barbecue, the Bauer barbecue event was born out of well, why can't we do this for real? Yeah. Why not? I mean, is this a matter of putting together? I mean, it's not like you guys didn't have the the groundwork laid in terms of, well, how did they do the Bauer barbecue, you know? Well, we all watched it take place, you know? So um, so that is so, that is so neat how you kind of brought that to life for fans and for the cast because – those who get to participate in that, that's a mini reunion for them, but it's a mini reunion for the fans, too, um, yes. to be able mm-hmm. to see that in action, you know, up close and personal, per se. The uh, nostalgia still runs deep, even how many years has it been? Nine years since it went off the air? And the, the well, nostalgia yeah. is so strong still to this day. Oh. Yeah, it's an anniversary I know. this month, I believe. 
Yeah. Yeah, I believe you're right, David. And I, I told Wendy earlier, Marie, that um, I've never quite gotten over the fact that they've gone off the air. <laughs> you know, it's just um, me either. I, in my opinion, they were the best. They were the best soap in daytime, and of all the ones that could have gone off the air, it, it just still baffles me that they were taken off the air. They were so hugely popular, and some of the best writing I'd ever seen. Um, Storylines were just off the chain. Um, amazing and the acting was amazing and um, it's just so sad that it had to end Um, but this is kind of this event that you guys have been doing for 13 years is just it's a way to get kind of give the fans an opportunity to um, you know to come and and mix and mingle with their favorites and that and have that nostalgia invoked within them because it you know, it's, it was it really hurt the fans. I think when this had to, and the and the actors too. I mean, everybody was um, just taken aback by it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, and you know, with all the online soaps that we have out there, you know, we're really excited that Crystal's going to be joining us. I don't know if mm-hmm. if. Um, if you've kept up, but man, this last season of Venice blew me away. It was, they really did a nice job with season five. I got to catch up. I do. <laughs> it was, it was pretty amazing. It was, an, it was a nice way to, to uh, put the icing on the cake for that series. Oh and of yeah. Of course, Crystal has a, yeah. she has a movie out. Yeah. Um, a million happy nows. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and do you know watching, when that's coming out? Do you know when it's coming um, out? I don't know that for sure, but uh, you know, I can find out. But I, I, what I do know is that, um, you know, when Crystal was trying to raise some money for um, season five, because you know it's it's you know all self produced and everything, yeah. um, she had some great perks. She really knows how to engage with fans. So we're really looking forward to this because she's really, really engaged with her fans. It's it's oh, pretty yeah. incredible she's, to watch. Yes. She has from I mean, from her days on God and Light to after the fact to what she's doing now, she is just such an innovator in the world of you know, of television, of and and then just what she does. I mean, she's an incredible actress, but she's also just so creative-minded and has been able to bring these great ideas, um, which are still just as engaging. And she is just brilliant in terms of her ability to produce and some of these things that she has um, and star in and, you know, recruit the cast that she's had in these you know, whether it be the web series, whether it be this movie. Um, and I'm actually looking up the information for uh, the movie now, A Million Happy Now. And I was trying to see when it was going to be. Uh, yeah, I was trying to find it, and, and I'm not having any luck either. I'm stuck. But um, I know that it's been nominated for several um, indie film-type uh, awards. So good mm-hmm. for her. Yes. Oh yeah. No surprise there, though. You know, mm-hmm. that's just it's just another testament to who she is and her success um, and what she's been able to do um, throughout her career to bring awareness to many different things, but also to write stories that today still strike a chord with you know viewers about many different topics and and things that are so relatable to today's world and what we're all, you know, enduring and things that we we experience. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I was looking and I do not, I don't see anything about when it's going to come out, but I will definitely be looking for that because... Well, and and it's and it's about a subject that um, most of us have been touched by in some way. It's about Alzheimer's. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And you know, if if you haven't personally experienced it, then you you know someone who has. And um, I know right. that 
uh, my stepfather is in a long-term facility and he has it and um, he has advanced stage dementia, but it's, you know, it's kind of one and the same almost. And just to watch him go from being, you know, have all his faculties and be able to live his life to now be totally dependent on care by someone else. And you go to the facility and you see the ward, you know, where they have all the Alzheimer's dementia patients. And, and, you know, it's just so sad because you look at those folks and you say, you just say to yourself, at one point they all had a quality of life. They were working. You know, they were spending time with their families. Mm-hmm. They were they were doing all these great things out there, um, living their lives to the fullest, and all of a sudden they no longer have that ability any longer. And it's just taken from them. And mm-hmm. I think it's one of the worst diseases next to cancer that, a human yeah. being can have. Uh, yeah, that's that's true. And Friday, Friday yeah. is the big karaoke dance party. <laughs> that's right. And are you oh, going to sing that? karaoke on Friday? Oh, oh, oh I always Marie's sing. our singer. Marie's our karaoke queen. Oh, Marie, what's your favorite song, Marie? <laughs> Oh, I have so many favorites, but um, I, I will sing pretty much anything Miranda Lambert's ever done, and um, I love to sing Adele, and um, yeah, she's a pro. I don't she mind doing some anything. Megan Trainer. Well, last year um, our host got caught in traffic, so so somebody had to vamp for a bit, and uh, that person was me. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Wait for her to, to come on. <laughs> I'm like, see I'm how, the first. See I how multi, need to be drunk. multi talented the elves are. But but on that note too, <laughs> um that day we had learned that Prince had passed away and Lauren oh, I was so sad. belted out purple rain. She was fabulous. Oh, it was awesome. Yeah. Oh that was, wow. It was yeah, that was awesome. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was great. So we're hoping to get a few more singers this year, a few more actors on board to sing. Uh, sing yeah, for the that cause. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Right, because I'm looking forward to doing a duet with somebody. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, uh, who would you guys like to sing with if you had a choice? Oh me? Oh God. Yeah. Um, who would you like to sing with? Probably Lauren. Mm. Well, there you go. You got to get yourself to New York next weekend. Mm. <laughs> Awesome. Oh, that's a tough one. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I would probably like to try to sing with um, with Robert. I mean, he's a phenomenal yeah. singer, and I don't consider myself a phenomenal singer, but I think he could carry. Well, you'll me. have to learn a show tune. <laughs> you'll have if you yes, want to sing did, with Robert. You'll have to learn show a show tune. tune. Right? Because yeah. I tried to sing with him last well, year. He says only show tune. So, I so you'll probably, have to that's okay. to something. Then. I'll just lip sync and wing it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I, we, I mean, we had a we we had a lot of individual talent, and we did we did a lot of group talent that night last year. Yes, we did. It was quite fun. Yeah. Yes, we did. So. It was wonderful. Oh yeah. Well, it's and I think there was done. there was a lot of Prince being sung that night. Yep. Oh, I bet. <laughs> yeah, that was a shock well, to all it's of us. Done. Yeah. It's sure going to be a fun time, I'm sure, and um, I know that next weekend is going to be a huge success, um, and 13 could be lucky for you guys. You're number 13, you know. it can either, Some That's people great. consider it an unlucky number, but I think it's going to be a lucky number. Um, you're going to have Absolutely. a huge turnout, and of course, the second hour, the second annual Barrel Barbecue, you can't go wrong there. Um, no, you can't. Great cast for that this year, but... Um, but we are probably going to wrap it up and um, because we don't want to hold you guys any longer. But we have had an absolute blast um, yes, talking have. with all of you this evening about this event. And uh, we certainly hope that it is a huge success. And I have no doubt that it will be. I'm sure next year will be number 14. And um, But it's, it's an exciting time. And I know that you guys are, are looking forward to it, as, as is everyone who's involved and I can't get here quick enough. Thank you so much. We right. appreciate your support of having us on the air, oh. you know, bringing us all yeah, together. Certainly. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you. you. Oh, it was our us. pleasure. We're very honored to be able to to do that. 
Thank you. All well, right, thank I'm going to sign off. I've got it. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Just you and me, Dawn. It's just you and me, David. <laughs> Well, what a wonderful show this has been. I mean, we got to talk to a lot of, um, you know, great people about this upcoming event. And, again, if you are interested in attending the Daytime Stars and Strikes event, um, it is taking place next weekend, and you definitely don't want to miss it. Um, It's taking place um, Friday, October 6th, the Sing It for Autism karaoke event. Um, and then the Venice the Series Give Back to Autism takes place on Saturday, October 7th. And then finally, uh, well, the Bloss we Brunch will take place on Sunday, October 8th. And the second annual Bower Barbecue also takes place on Sunday, October 8th. So you can go to the brunch and then follow it up with the barbecue. And it's going to be a big time. Lots of great um, guiding light stars will be in the mix and I'm sure many God Mike fans are going to be there. And it's taking place in Secaucus, New Jersey. And it'll be Columbus Day weekend, by the way. So if you want more information, go to the website, daytimestarsandstrikes.com. And it has uh, links to where you can purchase tickets and all the information about the events that are going to be taking place. So we hope that you can get out there and support this great cause. Yes, it is. And, David, as always, it is a pleasure um, hanging out with you this evening. It's been so much fun. Uh, you know, thank you, I mean, for showing up for us. Um, you, uh, you're you just wonderful, just like Pam, and I have so much fun with both of you. Oh, well, thank you so much. Well, this has been a real treat for me, and uh, I'm so honored that Pam asked me to help out tonight, and I'm glad that I was able to host since she cannot be with us this evening. So, um, But thank you so much for everything that you do for Take Two Radio, David, and uh, I guess we're going to go ahead and wrap this up um, as our time is going to run out on us. (laughs) But take care. I hope you have a great evening, and uh, to everyone who tuned in this evening, thank you so much. We appreciate it. And uh, and just keep checking the Take Two Radio Facebook page and the website and all those great places where you can find Take Two Radio to um, find out more about this event and many others and any other shows that may be coming up very soon. Um, so for Take Two Radio, I'm Dawn Mack and um, and David. Thank you again. And uh, you're welcome. Thank you. All right. Well, have a great night, everyone, and we'll see you again real soon. Okay. Take care, everybody. All right. Take care. Good night. Good night.